Emma, careful. That lamp is known to crush people. <laughs> that was a Ooh, close one. My life flash. Yeah, I mean, you gotta be careful around this guy. Yeah. Cannot be trusted. <laughs> Well, we are here at the brand new updated Disney's Pixar Place Hotel. We're so excited. So excited. It yep. just opened a few days ago, so there's lots yep. to see. This used to be Paradise Pier, so completely different, tons of Pixar stuff. During this tour, we're gonna see every single thing this hotel has to offer, from the rooms, to the pool, to the restaurants, to Emma doing this little dance, holding They're our Disneyland for tickets. Town. If you get if you know what that is, you're a cool person. Pixar Place Hotel is the first and only hotel in the world to celebrate all the films of Pixar Animation Studios. You'll expect to see contemporary design weaving together with whimsical Pixar artistry and lots of fun details. For instance, look at this couch. I thought it had olives on it, and then Emma pointed out, no, it's a caterpillar, look at its little feet. Which, fair enough. I liked it better when it was an olive couch, but it is what it is. The relatively small hotel is located across the street from Disney's Grand Californian Hotel and down the street from Downtown Disney. It is walking distance to all of Disneyland Resort. That's Disneyland, Disney California Adventure, and Downtown Disney. This is the least expensive Disneyland hotel, um, although still pretty pricey compared to some of the good neighbors. Um, it gives you access to all of those Disneyland perks and has 479 rooms, so it's on the small side. My favorite thing that I have learned about this hotel is that it has a nod to every single Pixar film to date. And seeing the concept art and art from the films all around the hotel has been so special. Now, when you arrive at the hotel, you'll find yourself in the lobby, which is super colorful, very cute. Um, and this is, of course, where you'll check in. Now, we were able to check in in advance using the Disneyland app. If you have your reservation linked to your account, you can check in right in the app. It's super easy, um, and it's called their direct to room service. With that, when your room is ready, you will get a text, and you can head straight to your room using your phone as a room key, which is pretty neat. Check-in is at 3 p.m. and that's when your room is guaranteed to be ready. It could be ready early, but if you're planning to be here before your room is ready, make sure you're ready to fill your day, whether that's heading to downtown Disney or even heading into the parks. But don't worry, if you are early, you can stop by the Bell Desk and they will take your luggage for you. Then when your room is ready, they can bring it up to your room for you. That's also a great amenity if you are checking out early as they can hold your luggage for you until you are ready to leave for your flight or to start driving back home if you're heading to the parks after you have to check out of your room. All right, now our room isn't quite ready yet in real life, but luckily you live in the movie magic world mm -hmm. and we're there with you, which means we can start this off by checking out the super cute Pixar themed rooms. Let's head up. You guys look so good. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hey you guys. How's Quincy from the past? She doing good? We're with Quincy from the present. Future? Time? Confusing. But you're with me now, so let's check out, uh, check out the room. <laughs> So we are on the 14th floor, which is pretty high up. I actually think, how many floors are there? I think it's 15. Today. Yeah, and the top floor is mostly suites. Then we've got um, Incredibles murals in the hallway, all sorts of Incredibles sort of notes, but um, every hallway has a different movie on the different floors, which is super cute. My favorite thing about the hallways are these carpets, which are sort of the sketchy designs of Pixar icons. Wally, there's Edna Mode and Jack-Jack, cars, super cute. But did I just walk past our room? I sure did. Let's go back. So to get into your room, there are a couple ways you can do it. You can use your Magic Band Plus if it is linked. You can also use your mobile room key in the Disneyland app, or you can always get a classic room key at the front desk if you'd like it. But let's use that mobile. Ah, it worked. We're in. Yay. Yay. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> First of all, we got to look at that view. Look at it, baby. Oh my gosh. We can see all of Disney California Adventure from here. It is so cool, this view that we have. We're going to be able to see like a backside view of World of Color tonight, which is going to be so cool, I think. You can see Incredicoaster and Pixar Pal around. It's literally the whole park. Emma could go stand right there and wave at me and I'd be able to see her. 
This is so cool. First impressions, very good. So let's look around this room. Okay, let's start with the entranceway because it's a good place to start. We've got our door, lots of light woods, kind of the vibe here. You have your emergency exit plan, your peephole. You've also got your bar lock for the door. The door has a deadbolt as well as a cute monsters at rest room occupied sign. Cuties, I am a monster at rest. The light switches in here confused me a bit when I first got here. I think they actually have maybe the functionality to dim. I don't see anything actually happening, but I also don't know what this light switch goes to. So kind of confusing light switches, but you know, hopefully you figure it out. Then we'll come back to the bathroom, but let's check out the closet. Little wardrobe here, double-sided doors, and it is a little bigger than you might think because it goes this way. We've got our upper shelf with plenty of storage space, steam iron along with ironing board. We have hangers and some options for guest dry cleaning and laundry. There's also guest laundry available just with regular washers and dryers too. And then we have an extra pillow and blanket down here. <laughs> We've got two glasses on these cute little Luxaball coasters. I love the Disneyland hotel coasters. Emma and I take these home every single time we stay at a Disneyland hotel. You also have your ice bucket, very important. And you've got a Keurig here, but where's all the coffee? So we open this drawer and you've got all your coffee fix-ins. You've got this cute little Pixar Place condiment kit. You've got tons of little K-cups and some to-go cups for your coffee as well. And if you don't wanna drink your coffee on the go, they also have regular mugs and a couple more glasses in the next drawer down. The final drawer is empty. It's the same size as the others. Little beverage cooler in here. It is not um, a mini fridge, it's a beverage cooler. They don't get quite as cold as mini fridges, but they're usually fine for leftovers. As you can see by Emma and I's leftovers sitting there. Um, this is one of the larger size ones that you can find in Disney owned hotels. So that's pretty cool. Then I do wanna talk about the door into the bathroom. So the door is this big sliding barn door which is a great space saver, but it's hiding the mirror, which is behind it the whole time. And you can see me do this. But now into the room proper. So right when you walk in, you've got your recycling and garbage bin right here. Then we've also got our little bureau, desk, TV stand combo. You've got your TV. It is one of these smart TVs and it's like a Samsung smart TV. So you can actually cast whatever you want to watch to this, which is great because Emma and I are in a really big Love Island phase. So we'll probably watch that tonight. We've got the art of Pixar here, which I'm actually really jazzed about. This is a book that I'm sure you can buy down at the store, but what's so exciting about it is you can look through it while you're in your room. I'm going to try to look through the entire thing today because concept art's awesome. Cute little chair. Um, for if you need to do any work. And then a couple of little things to welcome you to the hotel. You got this Pixar Place Hotel little pad folio. It comes with a um, postcard to Great Maple. That is a foreshadowing if I ever saw it. You've also got another postcard, a little Pixar Place Hotel postcard. This is a little law abiding note to remind you what behavior is not acceptable. And then you've got this little booklet that tells you all about the hotel and what you can find here, things to know about Disneyland Resort, and this little flyer for Tanaya Stone Spa if you're looking for some spa services over at Grand Californian. There's a Disney Vacation Club Center at this hotel, so you also get this cute little welcome gift from Disney Vacation Club. In our case, it is this paper about getting another gift downstairs and this beautiful up print. This is gorgeous. And then I are gonna have to actually fist fight over this, I think. Probably the best part of the room is that you have your very own Luxo, which is amazing. I love that Luxo is right here, which is super cool. And then you have your sofa. This is also a sofa bed, uh, which we will pull out, or like a day bed, we'll pull out so that you can see what we mean by that. But we're gonna do that after we finish looking around because that's part of bed science. We've got one of the first art pieces that we're gonna look through in here, which has a bunch of Pixar characters on their way somewhere. And if I had to guess, it's probably on their way to look at this amazing view of Disney California Adventure. Are you kidding? So we're on the 14th floor. This hotel has a lot of floors. Every room is not gonna have a view like this, but oh my gosh. Uh, we are in a premium room this time. It was all that was available when I booked our stay. So we're in a premium room, which probably has something to do with this view. But wow, is it not beautiful? You can see the lights, you can see Incredicoaster and Golden Zephyr, you can see Mission Breakout. I literally just stood here and stared at this for a while when we first got in the room, so, you know. But 
If you don't want to look at the view, you got these privacy curtains that still let light in and you can see the view through, but not too much. And we've got blackout curtains, ever important for that afternoon nap. But let's talk about the most important part of any hotel room, the beds. Two queen beds in this room. Um, there are a couple other options which we will go through when we talk about money. You've got four pillows on each bed, that extra pillow in the closet, you can always request more. And you've got these cute Luxo throw pillows, which I love. I love when hotels have throw pillows, even though I'm obviously not gonna keep it on the bed to sleep. I think it makes it look really homey and put together when you first get in. The best part of this room is the mural behind the bed, which has beautiful art of up, Ratatouille, uh, Toy Story, Finding Nemo, Soul, Miguel and Coco. I will be sleeping in the Coco bed if anybody needs me. You've got these little floating side tables um, with plugs and USB ports on the sides of the bed. There are reading lights in the bed. They pop out of the wall like that. And then you've got a reading light, which is great if you have someone traveling with you who maybe uh, does, goes to bed a little earlier than you do. Then let's talk about floor space. So pretty spacious room, honestly, tons of space between the two beds, tons of space out here. I love that there's a combo of this like homey hardwood with like a rug under the beds. I think it's super cute. And even the sides of the beds have a pretty good amount of space. Between the two beds, you have your main side table. This is a two drawer, little end table. Got a note about the construction going on, which we'll talk a little bit more about. There's a pad with a little pin pen that is branded to Pixar place. Of course, we will be taking that with us as a souvenir. Your phone with um, any numbers you might need and an alarm clock, which is something you don't see in Disney World hotels, but you do see in Disneyland hotels. The drawers here are pretty spacious. Usually the side table drawers are not where I would consider storing things, but I might in this room. Speaking of storing things, under bed space. It exists. It's cut off in the middle, so it's not massive amounts, but you can definitely fit multiple suitcases under here. And then last part of the main room is our thermostat. It is adjustable. That way you can kind of keep the room a comfortable temperature. Now on to the bathroom. Past that sliding door, we have our bathroom. It's a small space, it's all in one space, but there's a lot packed in here. So first, you got this mirror, which is a beautiful mirror. I can't wait to do my makeup in this in the morning. It is so well lit. You can see me do this. But more importantly, we got this mirror, which is normal this way and very silly this way. The vanity has one single sink, but a ton of vanity space. So I think you would have no trouble sharing this. We've got tissue box, uh, bath soap, and then you have body lotion and a shower cap over here. Then you've got your hand towels, some storage shelving under the sink, which has more towels and a hair dryer exists too. Then we have this cute little Luxo Junior and the Luxo Ball prints above the commode, ever important as well another trash bin, and we've got a glass door shower here. You got a note from Luca reminding you to conserve water. This is fun because it's usually aerial on this, so it's fun that it's Luca since it is a Pixar hotel. Your bath mat's hanging on the shower, door swings out, and you got this pretty nice white tile shower. It's relatively spacious. Um, the shower head is small, but it does pack a punch from a uh, pressure standpoint. Here. Not bad, not bad. And then we have our refillable toiletries over here. These are not something you can just open, which I is always what matters to me because of course you get the intrusive thought of like who's been putting what in these, but you got shampoo, conditioner, body wash, and they're no longer branded H2O, but I'm pretty sure it's the same shampoo, conditioner, and body wash. I don't know, just my conspiracy theory. I'm sitting on this couch. I think it's time for a redecorating montage. Let's do it. It's a little twin, but I think this is perfect if you've got a family traveling, kiddos don't wanna to sleep together, or you've got three kiddos, two in one bed, one in this bed, or you wanna cram five adults in this room. I respect you if you wanna do that. That's budget friendly. You cram five adults in this room, it's like a hundred bucks a night, basically. Um, anyway, sofa bed science is next. One thing about sofa bed science, the safety comes first. We never leap onto sofa beds, we flop. Oh. Yeah, this is one of the new ones. So there's a couple things I like about these sofa beds. One, they are a touch comfier. They're mostly on the firm side, but they're plush enough to feel like 
an actual mattress. You know what I mean? I've said it reminds me of the foam mattresses from Ikea, which are pretty high quality. And the other thing I really like about these is that they're way easier to open up. Um, I've had a lot of trouble with the older versions of Disney's sofa beds and this one very easy to open it's just that one little flip over super easy super space friendly there's no cushions that you have to go put other places they just fold right in so i'm a fan i'm a fan of the sofa bed and you know what if someone said quincy we're splitting a room at uh pixar place hotel and you can stay there for a hundred bucks a night but you have to sleep on the sofa bed i would say maybe maybe I pay 90 and you guys each pay two extra dollars because you get good beds, but I'm coming. And now, of course, the ever important Pixar bed science. Uh, I don't know why I did like a grunt at the end of that one. That was crazy. Uh, <laughs> I love Disneyland beds. I'm like sinking into it. Some of like, I feel like some of my best hotel night sleeps have been in Disneyland hotels and Pixar Place Hotel, no different. I'm like totally sinking into the bed a little bit. It's plush, but still firm enough to be supporting me. Oh, I love it. And we gotta check the, the pillows. Oh. Oh. So pillows in Disneyland are a little firmer than pillows in Disney World. You can see my head sinkage isn't as low. So. I think Disneyland mattresses win for me. I think that Disney World pillows win, but I like really, really soft pillows and Emma hates the Disney World pillows. This is what I would call the exact center between a soft and firm pillow. I think it's gonna be a crowd pleaser, which is what you want in a hotel. But that's bed science and that's the fun part, but now we gotta do the not fun part and talk about how much it costs to stay here. Ugh. All right, friends, now let's talk money to stay at Pixar Place Hotel. So this hotel has a couple of different room options. You've got your standard rooms, your premium rooms, which is what we're in. This is a premium view with that amazing California Adventure view, which by the way, just keeps getting cooler. There's also pool terrace rooms, and then there are club level options, plus one, two, and three bedroom suites. Right now, this hotel offers the Pixel Suite and the Sketch Suite, and coming soon will be two new two bedroom themed signature suites. Um, that'll be later in 2024, but those rooms will be the Coco Suite, if I ever get to stay in the Coco Suite, that would be amazing. It's supposed to pay tribute to Miguel and his family's legacy with vibrant Oaxacan art, and I would freak out to get to see the Coco Suite. The other one will be the Incredible Suite, which will have a mid-century design with a spy-fi twist, complete with par family memorabilia. I'm interested to see more about that because Disneyland suites are incredibly themed, those signature suites at the other hotels. So it'll be interesting to see what these look like when they are released, um, especially considering there are Incredibles rooms at the Contemporary. Money-wise, standard rooms, so the cheapest rooms you can get here, are gonna start around $400 to $450 per night, and you'll see those standard rooms go up to around $600 per night. Now, rates, of course, do go up from there depending on your room type, and they do vary based on date, and you should always be looking for special offers too. So we're staying tonight, I think, for around $550, um, which isn't horrible for a premium room, uh, and the hotel just opened, but it is January, so slow season. Lots of factors involved when pricing a hotel. If you are ever like, ah, this seems overwhelming. You can always use a travel agency like MEI Travel. It, it can be a major help to do something like that. It is a service where they will help make sure you are getting the best offer you can on a hotel, the saving the most money that you can, and they will kind of scour for any new special offers that pop up that might apply to you. So that's always an option too. But I like this room. As you can see, in, in present time, it's gotten dark. It looks really cool out there. Um, but you have to go back to past Quincy because she's still in the daytime and there's a lot more hotel to see and you gotta see it. Get, get back over to her. She's cool, I've heard. All right, so where better to start a resort walk, checking out this hotel than in the lobby. Um, this is, of course, the lobby, it's super cute. I, do you, have you noticed that these circle lights are in every hotel ever nowadays? Yeah. I wouldn't have like processed that thought, but yes. I, I've just I, been I've just been noticing it. I think everybody else should notice it as well. But the lobby is <laughs> awesome. It has these huge um, shots from Pixar films on the wall. It has clay models of some of your favorite Pixar characters, like the entire Incredibles family. Um, or Monsters Inc. is over here. There's 
concept art and visual art from the films on the wall, like Finding Nemo here. The elevators here are very fancy. To call them, you put your floor number in right here and then it tells you which elevator to go to and sends you up to that floor. And then here's a piano which has a ton of art from Seoul around it for a very good reason and that's because Joe Gardner from Seoul does actually come and play piano in the lobby five days a week. He should be here today so hopefully we can catch him but that's he'll play those cool jazz tunes that he's so good at. As you head further in sort of the lobby space there's a Disney Vacation Club Center. That is Disney's timeshare program so if you're looking to learn more about that you can head over here Oh my gosh. Hey, like Emma. <gasps> no, I can't tell the difference. The centerpiece of the entrance area has this giant Luxo ball um, with, of course, Luxo Jr. on it. I fear for that ball, truly. Um, and it has like a wind chimes mobile of stained glass Pixar characters. My favorite being Miguel over there, but I also love seeing Marlon Nemo and Elastigirl. It just looks so cute. In the morning, you can head to the Sketchpad Cafe. This is um, a limited hour spot. It's open from 6 a.m. to 11 a.m. most days, where you can find breakfast, coffee, all sorts of things. Right now, they're playing Pixar shorts in here. I imagine that's pretty standard. And there's tons of seating. Uh, my parents are actually in Disneyland at the same time as us right now. They're here for fun. And they said that they came here for breakfast both days. So they apparently liked they it. Really they really liked it. They're not staying here. It is a small menu, but they spoke very highly of the quality of what they have. So we're going to try this out in the morning. So don't worry. We will certainly be trying it out it's in this video. Be. Of course, Sketchpad Cafe, it's decorated with sketches of Disney characters, concept art and sketches, which Emma, how do we feel about that? I feel very strongly about sketches. If you want me to like something, toss a little concept art in there. All right. And I'm sold. Then across the hall, we have some elemental art. Um, as you head into Store E, which is, of course, named to reference Wally. -E. <laughs> oh my gosh. One thing I love about this store is that it is a mostly Pixar merchandise. Of course, some Disneyland merchandise, but pretty much the whole right side of the store is Pixar merchandise, which is awesome. There's also Pixar Place specific merchandise. You can get Pixar Place t-shirts, Pixar Place tumblers I here. I think we have to get one of the pins. We can oh my get, gosh. There's a Bing Bong one, or there's just like a simple oh, Pixar. I love the I simple, love the simple one. one. I think I'm probably gonna go simple. That's so cute. That's always one of the things I buy on our trips. Yeah, I'm always buy a commemorative day. pin, and we also buy a matching item. We do. I don't know what it could have been on our first ever Disneyland trip. What? There's even a spot where you can get Pixar prints printed. Um, they have tons. It's actually the Disney Pixar art on demand, so it's going to have a lot of different one, different options. Pixar, of course, is first, but there's tons that you can look through. And you can pick out, you know, any sort of print that you like. Wow. Oh, I love those. Alpha Broculus. And you can get these printed on canvas, on paper. It's a little pricey, uh, but they do ship, which is awesome. And I think this is a really unique gift where you can get something that is really exactly to your tastes. In the floors, you'll find Disney characters randomly embedded in the porcelain tiles. There's Doug in here. And those characters are actually a nod to the flooring details found at Pixar Animation Studios in Emeryville, California. There are how many? There's 16, but they're all around the hotel, so they're kind of hard to spot. There's. Over there one, I can't see who it is. And Eve is right here. Oh, they're so cool. Now the main sit down restaurant at this hotel is Great Maple Modern American Eatery, which is $2 signs, expensive. Serves breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Uh, but you'll find Modern American comfort food with an element of fun. So they'll have seasonal ingredients, says it has a stylish dining atmosphere. Um, just a variety of different options. They also have craft cocktails. Now this is a chain restaurant. Uh, but this one in particular will have black and white portraits of Pixar characters throughout the space, which were originally created for the Pixar offices in Emeryville, California, and they, this is the first time they've ever been publicly displayed. That's really cool. And they're in this restaurant. You hungry? Starving. All right, we're waiting on drinks still, but our appetizer has arrived. This is the charred cauliflower hummus, which I immediately saw on the menu and then immediately asked Emma if we could get, because I love cauliflower, and hummus. It's chickpeas and roasted cauliflower with warm flatbread and market vegetables, and it looks spectacular. This looks so good. It looks really good. I I was excited based on what it said, but then when they put it down, I got super, super excited. Mm. 
I love this. It's so flavorful. Mm-hmm. I'm like really shocked. I've never, you know, this is a Californian chain. We've never been to Great Maple. I guess it makes sense that it would be really good if they have it in a Disneyland hotel now. But holy moly. It's super smooth, mm -hmm. which I really, really love. I just think the different herbs and the garlic on top mm -hmm. adds like something really nice. I do want to mix it in though, because I'm scared we're gonna eat it all at once. I do too. I also will say, I think that there's like, it's very aromatic. Like most of the flavor is living in my nose in, a, in like a super, like a way that I mostly experience with a really authentic Mediterranean food, which obviously hummus is Mediterranean, but really amazing flavor packed into what would otherwise be like a simple dish. I'm impressed, great start. All right, so our first drinks, we are getting a couple because they've got some pretty exciting drinks here, but we picked out the Bear Brews. Sorry, Brew Bears, that's embarrassing. But uh, we each got one. Emma went with the salted caramel, caramel sauce and Maldon sea salt, that was so miel's. And then I got the Mexican mocha, which is chocolate sauce, Maldon sea salt, and a spice mix. Cheers. Oh, also our other drinks came, but I'm we'll focused talk on the bear right now. One drink at a time. It's a normal latte. I would not go out of my way to get this unless you just want the bear, which I highly encourage. I love what he looks like, but it's not like, it doesn't taste like anything Do you guys think this looks latte. like us? Um, mine tastes like, kind of like a chocolate milk but with mm. like spices, like Mexican really? spices. Yeah, it's really tasty. Yeah, mine is just, I mean, mine's just double espresso with oat milk, I'd say. There is salt, you can see the caramel, mm -hmm. but I think most of it's on the edge. The, um, Not bad though. The brew bears come as um, cold brew, but they also will do them with like a latte if you ask. Yeah. So. Uh, we love the bears though. Cheer bear. Care bear. I'm gonna try the Bloody Mary. I am super excited. It looks pretty standard, but it is one of their signature items. A lot of horseradish. All right, I did what I did lie to her. I told her I was like, it's probably not gonna be a lot of horseradish. <laughs> it's a lot of horseradish. I am not the biggest fan of horseradish, but that's just a personal preference. I know that my family will literally ask for extra sometimes. Um, that's me. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not necessarily that way, but it is mainly horseradish <laughs> even after mixing it. But it's not bad. It's it's a classic Bloody Mary, very tomatoy, but the heaviest flavor is that horseradish that kind of kicks in the back of your throat. So if you like a really spicy bloody, this is not super spicy, but I'd, say, I'd count it as a spicy Bloody Mary. And then it's got fixings, which I'm very excited to eat. Bacon, charred lemon, and olive. All right, and I have got the old fashioned here. I'm gonna dip the bacon directly in it and eat that first. Yeah, I'm mixing the lemon in I'm mine. stirring mine with the bacon. <laughs> Thick cut bacon, very smoky. Mm -hmm. Ooh, horseradish. <laughs> There's so much horseradish. In this. There's no horseradish in this. There's whiskey in it, which is an equally harsh flavor. Um, but this is a really awesome, I think, understated old fashioned. It manages to have some more unique flavor to it without, like completely wiping out the flavor of the whiskey. So the main flavor you're getting is still the flavor of that liquor, but then you also get some maple notes. You get the, the fatty notes from the bacon too. I think it's really awesome and it, it really does land as like a brunch cocktail for me. For our mains, we've got the turkey bolognese, which is fettuccine, carrots, tomato, cream, manchego cheese curls, and fried basil. And we also have the ribeye melt, which is griddled ribeye, aged white cheddar, pesto aioli, red onions, arugula, and tomato. And we went with the truffle fries, which are a little bit of an upcharge, but we've, we've had a few and they're delicious. I'm going with the turkey bolognese. Um, Emma and I are splitting both of these entrees, but I'm gonna talk about the turkey bolognese. Turkey is one of my preferred meats, which I think is an uncommon sentiment. I feel that way, but I agree that it's uncommon. I don't think a lot of people are like big turkey fans, but I am. I love turkey bacon, I love Thanksgiving turkey, I love ground turkey, uh, turkey meatballs, turkey. Well, you know that you know that part of Johnny Appleseed? <laughs> He's like, they've got apple pies and apple fritters, apple. No. <laughs> That's me, but with turkey. <laughs> um, all right, turkey bolognese. I'm really happy with this. This is like a heartwarming bowl of spaghetti and meatballs, but with twists that make it kind of a little bit elevated. I love 
the fettuccine, it's perfectly cooked al dente. The bottom of the dish actually has like cream still falling down from the sauce, which keeps it deliciously moist. Um, and there's huge chunks of tur turkey all through the sauce. Really amazing tomatoey flavors in the sauce too. Perfectly balanced from like an acidity standpoint. Yeah, this is killer. Uh, very, very hearty. I think it would be a bit of a challenge to eat this and then go into a theme park. And thank goodness that's exactly what we're doing. The ribeye sandwich. I'm really, really pumped about this one. It's massive, super hearty. Let's give it a shot. <laughs> First bite's really great. This is like a, the messiest sandwich, but in a really positive way. I'm gonna need another bite to really I think get any of the flavor. The ribeye is like super, super tender. It's just falling apart as I pull it with my fingers. Not, it's taking nothing at all. It just melts in your mouth. It's almost buttery. The cheese is really well paired. It also is melty, it just kind of mixes right in with the meat. There is a perfect amount of arugula and lettuce and kind of greenery on here. The tomatoes are super fresh and juicy, and then the aioli ties everything together. I think this is really crazy heavy, but in a super positive way. If you want something hearty, and honestly, if you want some like red meat, but you don't necessarily want a steak or a burger, I think this is a great option. My impression of great people in general is that if you are in Disneyland, you're having an out of the park stay, you're exploring the hotels, you're taking it easy, you're hanging out at the pool, having a heavier, more indulgent meal like this, could be really killer. They do have lighter options on the menu. We had that amazing cauliflower hummus, which was pretty light. They have salads and stuff that look amazing, but... Um, we wanted to try the signature items. So. Yeah, I think that after this, I would need like a little bit of a break before heading to the theme park. Yeah. So uh, luckily our room is ready, which you've already seen because of movie magic, but we haven't seen it yet. We're really excited. Yeah, we're oh, really excited truffle about fries. It. We're going to talk about truffle oh, fries. They're delicious. They're so good. They're the kind of small crispy fries. There's just enough truffle to get the flavor, but not be overwhelming. The cheese is nice and melty. I'm, I really like them. I think it's worth the upcharge. Me too. Emma is going a full food tour of Disneyland today. If you don't know, Disneyland has some of the best Disney food ever, in our opinions. The food is just awesome. And Emma's gonna go show some of the best of the best today. Um, but she is going to take you along with her on the path to show you what walking to Disneyland looks like from Pixar Place. And then tomorrow, we'll show you how to get to DCA. Yeah. Miss you. Bing bong. I'll tell Bing bong you say hi again. Bing bong. Huh? Okay, I just left the hotel. It's like 2.54. I've got my map just in case, but we're pretty much just going straight across the street. Okay, it took me about nine minutes to get over here to downtown Disney, but that honestly was waiting on the lights. That was getting my key out to get through the gate because you do need your resort key to use the path we're on. Um, but super, super easy walk. Okay, it's 3.07 and we made it through the gates. Super, super easy and you get to go through downtown Disney. Very cute and I always love looking at the Grand Californian as well. So now I'm going to eat a lot of snacks and if you guys want to see that, you're going to have to check out the Disneyland food tour. Alright, I am making a stop by the room on our way up to the pool deck. Um, but I just wanted to say, walking through the lobby, I'm hearing a lot of this really cool music. And the music at this hotel was actually composed for the hotel and it pays homage to a number of Pixar themes. Um, right now I'm hearing Incredibles music, which is awesome. Also, I'm in this elevator and the elevator has the house from up on it, which is super cute because um, obviously it flies as it goes up. This is the lobby elevator, which gives us a nice view of the mobile as we go up. Woo! We're outside, look! It's DCA! Oh my gosh, our room is so high. Wow! This is so cool. 14th floor. All right, we've made it up to the pool deck now. Um, and this is probably the best part of this hotel. You can see the hotel's pretty tall, um, which is awesome, because obviously the taller it is, the better the views. There's this really cute lawn with the Luxo ball built in. And just next to that is one of my favorite things that you can see at this hotel, which is the Pixar shorts court. 
Pixar Shorts Court is a spot where you can play interactive games that are inspired by Pixar Shorts. So you can toss bean bags that are inspired by Bao in steamer baskets. You can push La Luna stars across a shuffleboard court like they're doing right here, which is so cute. Um, and they have tons of games. They have others inspired by For the Birds and Burrow. Um, and if you look closely, you might recognize some of these umbrellas. Look familiar? What we got here? Burrow path, dig your way through the dirt as you discover the burrow homes of our animal friends. Cute, I love burrow. And for the birds, it's actually my favorite Pixar short of all time. So I love this little obstacle course. Follow the feather brain friends without falling off the wire. Maybe Emma and I will have to get out of here and play some more of these later. The bell ones are so cute. Now Emma and I are very sad that we cannot yet experience Small Bites. Small Bites is gonna be the pool bar location here. It is coming soon, early March is the plan, and it will be a Pixar themed quick service restaurant uh, located right by the pool, which you'll see in just a second. We'll see homemade potato chips, burgers, and classics, plus mini floats and alcoholic floats. What's really fun is what I just showed you, that pixel art of the 22 Pixar characters, which was created just for this hotel, but the menu's already posted and it looks awesome. We were really bummed that this isn't an option for us today, especially these floats. This sounds so good. And it'll also be a full bar. Headed this way, we make our way up onto the pool deck. This is an all new Finding Nemo inspired rooftop pool deck. Uh, we're on the third floor, so we are on the roof, but obviously the hotel is a whole lot taller than this, as you can see. But the pool deck has a lot of really fun features, fun details. First of all, there's plenty of seating, and this is a pretty small hotel, so I'm really happy with the amount of seating there is. This is more of that small bite seating, which uh, hopefully it doesn't rain. There's like torrential rain coming tomorrow for the next three days, so it can happen. And small bite seating is not suited for that. The pool deck has four, four different fire pits, and they're all inspired by Pixar characters that catch on fire. So you have Jack-Jack, you have Anger, or Angry, I guess Anger, I'm like thinking of dwarves. You have Anger from Inside Out. You have uh, the Volcano from uh, I Lava You, the short. And we have Ember from Elemental. But lots of fun seating sort of around to hang out in. It is chilly today, so you'll see there aren't too many people out. Now you do need to be staying at Pixar Place and have a room key or you know your phone with access to uh, your reservation to be able to get into the pool deck. But once you do, you have access to the main pool deck with lots of details from Luca, which I love. Luca's actually one of my favorite newer Pixar movies for sure. I absolutely love it. The pool up here is relatively small. It's called the Pixel Pool and it takes up most of this little uh, pool deck down here. You also will notice that there's a couple of different seating options. You've got your standard pool chairs, which are really nice cushioned pool chairs, would be great to sit out here. You also can rent cabanas. As you can see over there, there are two cabanas at this pool deck, as well as day beds, which is another great option, or pods. So these are all an upcharge, but you can rent these for the day if you'd like. There is also a hot tub slash whirlpool, whatever you want to call it, that's available. That is pretty popping right now because it is chilly um, for Anaheim right now. And the kind of centerpiece, creme de la creme of the pool area, is this amazing um, crushes surf and slide, which is super cute. You got crush at the top, you surf down it, just like you're in the EAC. And just ahead of it, you've got Nemo's Cove, which is an adorable little splash pad. Now, especially in the on season, you may be asked to wear a wristband while you're at the pool. They'll just verify your reservation when you're on your way in and then get a wristband for you. Today, they didn't do that for me because it is cold and slow, um, but it is something that could happen, especially on busier days. It's not a very large pool, so it's just for hotel guests and uh, that little hassle is just what helps keep the pool not super, super crowded if people were to try to hop. This hotel is 
not super large, but it does have lots of state-of-the-art equipment. We can head inside and take a look, because I don't think anyone's in there. Yeah, no one's in here. <laughs> we have the fitness center, nice new equipment, big mural of Mike and Sully running on the wall to get you motivated. Try to check my notes, make sure there's nothing else. I need to say. Fitness center is also nice because they do have a couple little Nutri-Grain bars, some cuties that you can grab if you need them. Plus towels, Dasani waters. Um, all complimentary for your use. There's a little water cooler as well. And you can even book a reservation to enjoy fitness classes like yoga, strength training, stretching, aqua meditation, and aerobics. It's pretty cool. There's an enterprise office up here. It's under construction, but it exists. Um, plus, this hotel does have some business facilities, meeting rooms and things like that. So, obviously not something that everybody is gonna need. But if it is something you need, Pixar Place is an option for you. While we're up here, let's talk a little bit about parking. Parking is relatively expensive at Disneyland hotels because it is so limited. So self-parking for Pixar Place Hotel is available to registered hotel guests only for $40 per night per vehicle. Yee! <laughs> Um, just always keep in mind that Disneyland parking fees are steep. So if you're headed to Disneyland, you're thinking about renting a car, maybe balance those costs and make sure to include those parking fees when you're looking into it. The Disneyland hotels do offer club level and Creators Club will be offered to concierge level guests. It's a collaboration between Disney Imagineering and Pixar Animation Studios with concept art, maquettes, and attraction posters. Um, there will be repurposed light fixtures from the former's A Bug's Land, which is amazing, and even a snake ride vehicle from Jesse's Critter Carousel in uh, Disney California Adventure Park, which is super cute. But concierge level guests will be able to have snacks and beverages throughout the day and a dedicated concierge to assist them with any requests as well. Absolutely love that the guest laundry signs have a sock on them from the 2319 incident in Monsters, Inc. We got a 2319! Oh my gosh, there's Monster Sync music playing too, and this is a very long hallway. Very echoey. <laughs> it's kind of spooky. Oh, I guess this is Incredibles. Wow. Yep, there's the laundry room. Always, always, always check the Disneyland site to make sure that you're aware of any construction that will be happening on your hotel during your stay. That way you're not caught off guard. Construction hours are limited and construction noise will only occur within those hours. But we were told that construction hours start at 6 a.m. right now. Whew. And um, fire alarms can even, you can even hear fire alarms while it's going on with what they're doing right now. So we did get a letter notifying us of what to expect, but just something to be aware of. We're back in the room. Mm -hmm. We're tired. Um, but we're gonna watch World of Color. I'm so excited. When it starts soon from our window, which is gonna be so fun. And they're gonna pop the music in on the TV, yep. which is very neat. And then we're gonna go to sleep and we'll see you guys in the morning for some more resort exploring. See you then. We're heading downstairs, gonna drop off our bags, grab some breakfast, and then head to the park. And we'll show you how to get to, we saw Disneyland yesterday with Emma, we're gonna show you how to get to Disney California Adventure today. And we'll talk about if we think this hotel is worth it now that we've had a full night's stay. As promised, we are starting our day today at the Sketchpad Cafe. This spot is only open in the morning, 6 a.m. to 11 a.m. And we are thrilled because we were scoping it out yesterday. Also, you know what I read? The wall is a timeline of Disney animation development done in the sketches. That's why the line connects them. And it goes from Toy Story and then onward. Well, Not I onward, but maybe onward. I don't know, I haven't looked. <laughs> hey, we're waiting on our coffees, but we got a little breakfast. Emma went with this really yummy smelling vegetable frittata. And I went with this adorable little jar of overnight oats. I'm trying out my oats. My hair's still wet. Mind your business. I should have held the camera with my other hand. <laughs> I can't use the spoon. Okay. We're in, everyone relax. Banana, pumpkin seeds, shaved coconut, oats, all on top of like sweet overnight oats, but not too sweet. I think a great breakfast, especially if you're like me and breakfast is a challenge every time. Are there other people like that? I think so. I, I don't think you're a, a If you're like that, tell me in the comments. <laughs> also, my parents are here. My dad said he didn't want a cameo, but I'm filming it anyway. 
right, here are our coffees. We both went for cold brew, which I wasn't gonna do, but then I saw they have coffee ice cubes. So we had to. So we had to. We both got caramel cold brew with coffee ice cubes. Emma just got a little something extra. You can do a build your own here, and they had glitter, rainbow glitter. So I had to get it, and then also caramel and whipped cream, so that way you could see the rainbow glitter, because there's no point in rainbow glitter if you can't see it. We operate very differently at breakfast time. Yeah, I. We, there's like a sweet spot where both of us are really sick if she eats and if I don't eat. It's actually like a beautiful yin and yang. Coffee cheers. Cheers. Mine's crunchy. Crunchy? I have glitter. <laughs> um, this is a super robust cold brew. Mm -hmm. um, I think I need to stir mine because their caramel is definitely a sauce, not a syrup, so it's not mixing as well. That's where my problem's coming in. It's yeah. a good coffee, it's just not mixing the way that I like mine. Things kind of combine. Yeah. She likes super sweet too, so, so if things don't, if it, the whole cup doesn't taste sweet, sweet, she doesn't love it. Whereas, like, I don't mind this because I like, you know, black coffee, but I do have caramel in it and I can't taste okay. it because it's all yeah. in the bottom. Well, I'll give it a stir. <laughs> um, I, you can tell all the ingredients are high quality, which is yeah, good. It's like, very nice. And I love the coffee ice cream. I was cream. about to say that I really love the coffee That's like an cubes. elite menu option. Well, if you don't know this about me, I take days to drink coffee. So this is kind of a game changer. Uh-huh, because it can just be more coffee. More coffee. Uh-huh. I'm trying the frittata. My mom's blueberry muffin was really good, too. This is really nice. This is egg whites, mainly. And I love it. It's light, it's fluffy. There's so many vegetables in it. And honestly, I keep getting, there's chives. It feels like a really good, high protein, healthy option when you've been at Disney for a little bit and you just need a good, you know, not greasy option for breakfast. Emma and I swear by the egg bites at Starbucks as like a little punch of protein, which um, we can't usually get because they actually don't have those in the Disney World parks. Um, they have them at Universal, but this is like a better version of that. Yeah, it's really nice. I like it a lot. All right, so we've headed out from the hotel. As you can see, we are standing outside of it. Just, uh, this is how you get to Disney California Adventure. Cross the street, in the crosswalk, head towards Grand Californian, find Emma, she'll be right here doing this. And you're just gonna pass her okay. on the left. Do not make eye contact. For four hours Do not, day. listen to me, do not make eye contact. She's if gonna you try. Give me money or a Coca-Cola. <laughs> It's like a gremlin out. Do not look at her and do not make eye contact and don't feed her after midnight. <laughs> um, and then there's two gates here. So you saw Emma go through this gate yesterday. We're gonna go through this gate today at a Disney California Adventure using our room key. You have to look me in the eyes because I have your room key. How'd you get it? <laughs> well, rather not <laughs> And then it's off to Disney California Adventure. While we're on the way to Disney California Adventure, we have a full stay under our belt at Pixar Place. Uh, checkouts at 11 a.m. is automatic, uh, which is awesome. So unless you have a question about your folio, you can just leave, which is awesome, um, which is what we did also. We dropped our bags off at Bell Services. But beds were great. I they think were, so. I, really I slept great. really, really well. Um, let's talk about perks that you get when you stay here. As you can tell, you do get easy walking access to the theme parks. You also get early entry. Most days there is early entry 30 minutes before regular park opening for um, either Disneyland or Disney California Adventure. So that can be a great way to ride some of those popular rides without buying Genie Plus or having to wait in a really long line. You also get these easy, convenient walkways to the theme parks. There's activities and celebrations you'll find at your hotel. You can charge to your room. You get preferred access to hotel dining reservations. And there's the direct to room service where you can check in online. So now Emma wants me to say, is it worth it? Let's discuss it. <laughs> I told her Ms. Elliot would sue us. <laughs> so is Pixar Place Hotel worth it? Um, pretty expensive, but we obviously had a great stay. So let's discuss pros and cons. Um, the pros are your proximity. Really close to the parks, you got these walking paths that are super easy to use. You can walk to the other resorts. Now, proximity is less of a pro in Disneyland than it is in Disney World because there are tons of much cheaper non-Disney owned hotels that and are some closer. closer. Our actual other hotel we're staying at during this trip is a shorter walk to Disneyland and, and to the front. It's about the same to DCA it's about the same. than this one. And we're paying about half the price yeah. to stay there the other nights. Um, we're at the Fairfield Marriott, in case you are looking at hotels. In case you want to come visit. Yeah. <laughs> Other pros are the rooms. The rooms are amazing. Oh my gosh. The theming is it. amazing. Ab if you're a Pixar lover, this is unmatched. Like, it was a really amazing experience to be able to stay in a hotel where you're surrounded by Pixar all the time. Um, and of course, that Disney magic is going to be a pro. If you're coming to Disneyland and being immersed in Disney is a really big plus for you, 
could be worth it to splurge for the hotels. And this is gonna be the cheapest of the Disneyland hotels. Cons price. Yeah. This is a good hotel. Um, but you can get good hotels for much cheaper in the area, still walking distance. So it, the price is just a really big one. If you're not paying for that Disney magic, if you're not paying for that Pixar theme, you might want to consider going across the street. Construction is also a con here. There is a bit of construction still going on at Pixar Place. Um, construction noise from 9 a.m. or 6 a.m. to 9.30 p.m. p.m. Long hours of construction noise. It didn't bother us at I all. I did not hear it once, but yeah. she also said that sometimes it will trigger the fire alarms yeah. and certain little things that we would have noticed. If There's still happened. scaffolding around. Some of the stairwells were unfinished. So there is still some construction going on. Obviously, Small Bites wasn't yet open. The concierge level isn't quite open. So construction is going to be around for a bit longer at this hotel. And the final con is crowds. These Disneyland hotels do get crowded just because people are stopping by. Pixar Place was really slow while we were here. Yeah, it was very quiet, but it's also just kind of getting started. Yeah. We're here during a time where the weather's really ugly, which is different from every normal, other day of the year. Normal time here yeah. in Anaheim, so that also could have impacted We've apparently crowds. brought with us in, in incredibly severe rain this afternoon. Orlando girls, Woo! Um, we can't escape it. But yeah, these hotels can't get crowded. This hotel has meeting space. If there's any sort of like business going on, <laughs> business, if there's any business going on. My father does business. Yeah, well, I'm in business. If any of that's going on, you could have bigger crowds. It's just something to be aware of with Disney hotels. They can get busy. People do come and visit them. No one's probably going to come walk around the lobby at our Fairfield Marriott, but people are gonna come see Bing Bong. Yeah. So, you know, that, that can be something to consider. Overall, it's definitely up to you. I think that this hotel is worth it if you're in it for the theme and the Disney magic. I think that's the big deciding factor because it is so much more expensive and the same distance from the theme parks as some of the good neighbors. Um, obviously, you get a couple of those perks too, which are great, but if you're okay for going a couple perks and the Disney magic, you're gonna get plenty of in the parks. Maybe, maybe go a little cheaper. Yeah. If you want those things, splurge, splurge mm -hmm. a little. Live your life Go for hang you. out with Bing Bong. Yeah. If you like this video, go ahead, like, and subscribe. Now go check out our full tour of the Disneyland Hotel up on the channel right now. We'll see you there. Bye.